Hello. Today we're gonna tie a salmon fly called the sneaky beaver. In Danish it would be something like luskedusken. The idea of this fly is that it's pretty camouflaged in the, the river it's designed for. It's called Skian River. And the um, idea about it is that it's pretty camouflaged in the water. So the salmon don't see it until it's passing over its head. So that's the idea of it. And I try to match uh, the size and the colors so that it would be visible about 30 centimeters down in the, in the water. I tie the front end in orange black and yellow black and brown black or just brown or something, something like that. And this is a size 8 double hook I'm using today and I have uh, tied in size 6 double hook, 8 double hook, 10 double hook. Um, that's basically it. Alright, let's get on with it. I like to put a tail varnish on the, on the shank here, just for security. I'm using uh, some of these cable of threads, I like that. It's strong, I used to tie with. And I have some wax here on my finger, I just run it through to make it stick better. Comes in some wire. Run it up. And then I turn the tip around to lock it. So if it, someone's gonna tilt in to the tag or something like that, I won't be able to pull it out. I like my flies to be strong uh, so they can take more than one salmon. I uh, make four turns here yeah, from the uh, sack. Four, and then I go behind and between the hooks and help the wire to go. In the back side, turn it over, secure it with my thread going up, and do the same thing as it is when I start to fold it back. For security. And then I'll leave it there. Now we're gonna tie in some some fibers for the tail. Just to I think it's peacock. Just take some, some here, go it out in 90 degrees and take it off. Just gives the fly a bit of stability in the water. I think, and then maybe it's uh, something about looks as well. Alright. So, make a pinching loop. Up, down, and follow it down, straight down. Then too much to the back. Go over the tag here. There we go. Cut off the excess. X. Tidy up. Yeah. 
Now I'll take some silk, and this is a uh, cup color. Going forward. And from the back, just like everything else. Just with security. Yeah. I missed some fibers. Some wax on. Run it back. And then run it up. What's the head? Prepare the thread with some wax. I run the um, silk one way and the wire the opposite way. It makes a stronger fly. I think it's also looking better that it's crossing over if there's any one who cares about the, the looks of the fly. Yeah, cross it over. And one more, and then fold it back. Cut off the excess. So I prepare the press for the wires coming up. So the wire is turned the other way around. Enough of the main, just push it in, put some wax on, tie it up. To make the, um, the wing of the haggle um, fill more in the water, uh, to make the fly more lively, I like to put on uh, some material here. Call it a scarf or something like that, if you like to call it something just below the head. And um, basically, what it does is it's raising the wing, and um, the front haggle, so it stands out more. I think that's a very good idea with a lot of flies in in brown water because that um, when you hang it by your own bank they they will move to the vacuum created behind the haggle and the wing. Alright, the wing use some fox and here's some Brown, I'll start with, and then some red brown afterwards. So, uh, turn off the axis. Yep. 
back. I see the wings standing up more or less vertical. It's going to change a bit, and especially in the water. Not too much focus for the, the red part of the ring. It's red, brownish. Probably have a special name for that color. I don't know it. The excess makes the thread. Again. The haggle I use an orange and a black feather, put them above each other, put them in the tips, draw back the fibers. I like to do it that way because then. I think the two colors blend more into each other, making them more pretty, a bit of camouflage, so to speak. Take in that tip, run a bit forward, take the inner tip, turn it back, just for security. And then I hold the thread, break off, makes this. Makes the thread, a little bit forward. And I can see here some tips material. Tweezers is small tweezers, nice for precision work, I think. All right. Then I'll lay down the fibers with the scissors and I run the along the shank of the of the fur. And I lay down the fibers on the sides going in towards the in towards the hook. So four back the fibers, making two turns. In the second turn, I run around and come up here. I see uh, where is the shoe? Should tie in. And pull back away the fibers. Do the same here. Do that with tweezers as well. So you see it. So you have the stem of the of the feather. No five sun. Turn back one time. And forward just to make sure that's all the way back. Just putting the turns just in front of the other. 
And here, come up here. And turn further forward in a 90 degree bend. Come and go with the thread. And you can go back if you want. Right. Then, on the thread tight, pull off the feathers. I fold back all the fibers to tie up. From the head. Some more wax. Up again. Yeah. Why to do that now? I was taking a toothbrush, unused one, remember that. <laughs> and um, put the fibers to make them blend. Then I just whip finish. Some less than fibers here. There you go. I might just put some then more wax up and a second turn. We shift now oh, the second whip finish and not. There you go. Tie up. Off. And then remove the wax. The excess wax. The spare wax. There we go, put on some varnish. Could change the color of the hair, but yeah, too. And there you have it, the sneaky beaver. On Danish, the luskedusken. Sneaks in on the salmon and surprises them. The silhouette and the air passing over it. Thank you for watching.